Hi, welcome back to Box Delights. The game I want to show you today is called Sovereigno. It's an abstract strategy game for two players. The kind of game that you can get stuck into and mull over. There's a couple of unique things about this game that make it stand out as an abstract strategy and one that I particularly enjoy in playing right now. Each player has one emperor, two archers, and eight guards. All pieces can move one space orthogonally, except for the emperor who can also move one space diagonally. Capturing is just like in a regular positional game like, like chess. So you capture a piece by occupying its square. The exception, and this is one of the first rules that's different, are these archers. The archers, when they capture, they don't move to capture. They always capture it two spaces diagonally and they don't move. So instead of moving the piece, you just say, I'm going to capture with my archer and take your opponent's piece away. Okay, we'll look at this archer in a little bit more detail as we look at some of the strategies involved. But the other second unique thing here is the winning conditions. There's two ways to win. You either destroy your opponent's emperor by capturing him, or you score the most points. And points are scored by occupying one of these three spaces on the board. The throne space here can be occupied by any piece, but if at the start of your turn the throne is occupied by the emperor, then you score three points. You track your points using these stones. Okay, the other thing is, if you occupy the, the throne with your emperor at the start of your turn, then you also end the game. So that's how the game immediately ends. The game also ends if the emperor is captured. These other spaces, marked with a tower, can be occupied by any piece. So it could be the emperor, it could be an archer, it could be one of your guards. If you occupy one of these spaces at the start of your turn, then you score one point. So your aim, if you can, aside from trying to just kill your opponent's emperor, in which case you immediately win the game, is to try and win the game by occupying the throne once you've got the most points. Now normally you're trying to get yourself ahead in points. If you can get ahead in points and then take the throne, then you're going to win. And of course, ahead in points, remember you're going to get three points from here, means if you're at least only two points behind, only a point behind, equal points or more points, you're going to win the game, because this is going to give you three points and end the game, right? So that's the thing you're rushing to do. Now, the reason why these guys are called guards, your king, your emperor here, is, is really vulnerable. He's vulnerable, and you're going to need to protect him using your other pieces. The other unique thing about this game is the way your pieces move, and the way you take your turn. Unlike chess, where you're alternately taking moves, in Sobrano, each player gets to take three actions on their turn. Okay, so you may decide to move, move, and then perhaps capture with an archer. Okay, three. You don't have to take all three, you take up to three. Right? So it could be one, two, or three. But you have to move at least one, or capture with at least one piece. There's a slight advantage to starting the game, so the opening player only gets to do two moves. And that's quite critical, because those opening two moves then become part of your strategy. I mean, one of the things you can do is try and dive for the centre perhaps by moving two guards up, or maybe you want to try and push your archers into a defensive position. So a common opening move might be to move two archers. Incidentally, you can't move the same piece twice on your turn. Okay, So as you're three, you can't go one, two, three. All right. So two pieces for your opening player. It doesn't matter if you're black or white who opens. Um, and then three, up to three moves each then for the rest of the game. So let's have a closer look at some of those ideas. Let's assume that the white player is going to go for this tower here. So it's going to take him one, two, three, four to get there. But the archer can take up a very strong defensive stance in one, two, three. Do you see how now anything that moves in here is immediately under attack? So what can they do about it? The archer can either be captured, perhaps using a guard, or a little easier is to stand in the way. If you manage to put a piece 
between the archer and the target square, that now is blocking line of sight. Okay, I mean obviously black could block line of sight with his own pieces if he got himself in, in trouble. But if you can either capture the archer or put a piece in between, that then makes the tower vulnerable again to you moving in there. Those are the kind of things you're thinking about doing. So a strong opening for for black is to perhaps do something like this. Push your archers up and obviously on the next turn you can do something like this. One, two, three. And then you're looking to get these into these defensive positions. Okay, remember you can move up to one, two or three pieces each turn. The other thing obviously is to go for the go for the towers. Alright, and, and so let's assume that white's doing this. Now this guard can't go here. So it's all about that power struggle really for trying to get yourself in a position of taking those towers. Um, and how you're going to win that power struggle is going to be played out through the middle. Okay, so take these defensive positions. If you fail to do so, then these are open to your opponent. Of course, White's probably going to be looking to do the same. Which means now the struggle is in the centre. And it's going to be all about who can get enough influence here in the middle to force these guards to abandon their guard so that you can go in, block the line of sight and then take these towers, score the points. Of course the other option is to go for the Emperor himself. Now at the start of the game the Emperor is well defended. The guards with their shields are doing a great job of defending that Emperor. But you know, once you've gotten yourself some points, you're going to be looking to try and move that emperor through the middle and take that centre point. Now, moving your guards up is always tricky, particularly when you start to get face to face here. Okay, because if you move into this space, then this guard will take. But the other thing that Sobrano offers is what we call this counter attack, and this is where fighting over the centre becomes a little bit more strategic. It's not just a matter of who can race to the front first. A counter-attack says, if I take a piece, then a guard who is in direct line can counter and take. All right? So it can't be at the side, it can't say, I'm going to take and then I'll counter-attack like this. No, it has to be in direct line. Okay, so these three pieces are in the direct line. One, and then counter-attack. And that's an out-of-turn movement, right? It doesn't count as your one of your three. It's something that happens on your opponent's turn. Okay? So when you're moving your guards up, one of the things that you can do is keep them, remember you're moving three pieces at a time, up to three pieces at a time, is kind of keep them in this triangle pattern. Because then they can defend each other. So there's a lot of strategy around positioning your guards and advancing them in such a way that you can't lose that material advantage. Because once you do, then your opposition can play for these spaces. The other thing about your archers, I guess, as the game develops, assuming that they're going to be in this kind of position, you can see that while they're here, they're defending these towers, but they're not defending the throne. So if the emperor gets close, you will have to move your archers off to the side to defend that throne. Okay, which means then this tower, if I move this one, becomes vulnerable and this tower becomes vulnerable. So there's different ways of maybe forcing these archers out of position using your emperor. I mean, if, if everything stays static, nobody's got any points, everything's sitting at zero, and that emperor gets in here, then you're going to score three points and win the game straight away. So this does kind of force these archers out of position to allow you to then take those towers. Okay, So there's quite a lot of strategy involved here and, and no player has that immediate advantage and you will start to develop some opening lines, particularly if you're facing the same opponent all the time. One little tip I can offer when you're playing is, particularly if you're deep in thought about which pieces you're moving and everything's tangled up in the middle, is as you move a piece 
turn it, and then you'll remember which piece you've moved. Remember, you can't move the same piece twice, and you'll remember how many pieces you've moved. Okay, end your turn. Put everything square again. Um, that's what we've been doing, just to remind ourselves which pieces we've moved. So let's have a quick look at a sample of how the game might play. Incidentally, you'll notice I've kind of pimped my board by painting these gold. It just made them stand out a little bit and just gave it a little bit of a richer um, appearance. But the components are just great anyway. And this is all deeply engraved. Okay, so let's start with something that looks like a, a standard opening. Two pieces, remember, is the most you can move on your first turn. Now, white can respond with, with three. Now, the fact that the archers have gone forward means that they could afford to wait a turn before bringing their archers into a defensive position. Um, but let's, let's move one, two, three, like so. One, two, three. Now what white could do here is they could move one, two, um, and take that middle ground. You notice how um, if black attacked, he could counter-attack, okay, and white still has that throne. And it doesn't do anything for white, it doesn't mean that they can score any points, but what it does mean is it makes it harder for black to then push his emperor forward, because if, if his emperor comes near that throne, and he's get taken. Now remember the emperor can move diagonally, so a good approach is to come in at this di at, at this angle, because then the emperor can come in and can't get counterattacked. However, it's going to be hard for white to do this because this archer at the moment is in an attacking position, unless we can get a piece in here to block line of sight. So with white here in this forward position. I think better would be to then push on these flanks. So let's get one in here. Um, we'll go one this way, threatening here. This is why you need to remember which pieces you've you've moved. You see. Then I want to move my emperor forward. Okay. So that's the three. Now black can take a forward position here, but he's vulnerable to attack if he does. So what I'm going to do instead is move these two. In fact, I'll move this one here and then this one here. Let's do that. Yep, yeah, that's my three. Now we have block line of sight here, obviously, on the throne using our own pieces. So let's say that white goes here, threatening this spot. Obviously then can move here like so. So that's the three. Black needs to defend that tower, so that's move number one. We don't want to move that here because that will block the line of sight. We could move in here, which will cause the counter attack. I think that only uh, weakens Black's position. Instead, we could move this tower, this guard across, now threatening this piece. And now they move to move their archer up because we're going to take this tower. Okay, so I'm going to move up. Okay. So now White, remember, he doesn't get any points for moving in there. He has to survive and be standing on that point at the start of his next turn, which he won't be, because that archer will just take him out. And um, we definitely need to bring up some archers. Let's bring up this one first. Let's move number one. This one's two steps away. But that will mean he goes here, I go here, he goes here, I go here, he scores a point, and then I kill him. But I need to move this. And ideally, shoot, so white's made a mistake. Let's come over at the way. Black's going to go for this tower. Let's move on to one. I'm happy to keep this here, this archer. He's doing a good job here. I could attack him, but then he'll counter, which hasn't really gained me anything. 
I can't move him in there because he's vulnerable. We'll attack here. It's one. He's now vulnerable, isn't he? We'll attack here. If I move him out of the way, I'll block line of sight. He'll move in here, get a point. So I need to move him this way. That's okay, two, three, like so. And this arch is not doing anything. There's an opportunity for this emperor to move forward. Remember, they can move diagonally as well. I'm going to move him here. Get rid of this piece. I'm go one, two, like that. Now I'm aiming to come down here, you see. Yeah. Let's move our archer in as well. Okay, that's my three. A white. And black is going to do one, two. This emperor is now threatening this space. And I can move this in here. That's the three. Okay. Now white can't do anything about this. But we can do this. One, two. I can't move in here because that can take here. I know the Emperor was under threat. If he takes me, I counter attack and he takes me. I'm going to leave that one here and push this one across. Okay. Black gets a point. So we take a point. And we score it. Now we got to try and push for that end game, but it is going to be killed next time. So I could move it off. Right, I've got my point. I can move it back, or I could even sacrifice it as I try to push my emperor forward. This piece is guarding the throne. So if I put my emperor here, she's going to get captured. Right? I have to threaten this space. I can move this here. That's one. I might be able to get my emperor in here, so I might go two, three. I've lost a piece if I do that, but it might not matter. If he spends a move doing that, I can do this, I can do this, or even if he moves in here, I can, you know, I can't capture him. It's tricky. Let's see. Okay, so that's black done. And then White's turn. White's obviously going to take the guard here. Um, obviously he takes his point as well, so now points are even. His guard's going to try and take me here. That's move number one. I've got another piece I can take. That's move number two. And now obviously I'm vulnerable. But I can move back. Now White's managed to do a good job here because points are now even. The archer's defending this tower. We've got pieces attacking his pieces. His emperor can't take this because I'll take his emperor and that'll be game over. Probably a blunder on Black's part to lose his tower here and try and push for the middle. Anyway, you can see there's a great deal of strategy here, musing over the board, plotting ahead. It's just the kind of game that delivers the best of abstracts. There's very few pieces, it's quick to learn, quick to pick up. You've really got to consider the oppositional play, especially with that counter-attack and the fact that you've got to try and plot three moves ahead makes this um, incredibly tactical. Obviously I've not spent a great deal of time on, on the strategies, I'm starting to understand and learn a little bit about the strategies. It does need a lot of investment to, to master this game and it is the kind of game that I think if you and a partner can invest in this game then you're going to get a great amount from it. It plays relatively quickly, um, there is a draw position obviously, you can force the draw by ending the game, putting your emperor on that crown and on that throne 
uh, drawing with your three points. If you can get your guards in a position where they can successfully defend these towers, then you're looking really, really strong. I mean, now White's looking at doing something like this, and taking out this archer's defensive position. The components are great quality. Their strength in depth with developing openings and lines of play. It looks beautiful when it's set up and it looks beautiful to play. All you need is a willing opponent and Sovrano is going to deliver a wonderful gaming experience. Look out for it. Thanks for watching and thank you to Cambium Games for sending me this prototype which is a delightful addition to my gaming collection. Bye for now.